Hello, and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. In this video, we're going to look at section 1.2, which is adding and subtracting whole numbers. And we're also going to introduce perimeter, which is an application of adding. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define what is addition. Well, if we look at this example, if we're asked to find uh, the addition of these two numbers, we have to define some terms. Sometimes we'll be told to add numbers. So we know the term add. Well, we could also use terms like added to, or more than, or increased by, or total. And an example of each of those is if I say 88 is added to 123, that tells me the operation of addition. If I say uh, 123 more than 88, we would add the two together. If I say 123 is increased by 88, again, we're asking to do addition. Or finally, if I say, one, what's the total of 123 and 88? That also tells us addition. So we have to be familiar with those terms. Another thing we want to define is what the values are. When we're talking about addition, the values that we are going to combine together are called the add-ins. And the result that we get from our add-ins is called the sum, the value we're going to get. Now, many of us, when we first learned how to add, we did it horizontally. So let's look at that as an example, 123 plus 88. And when we add horizontally, we put everything in its place. We have the ones that line up, the tens that line up, the hundreds, and so on. Now, <clears throat> to add, we simply just add 8 and 3 in this example. And 8 plus 3 is 11. Now, 11, if any value is more than 9, as an example, 10 or 11 or anything higher than that, we have to do what's called carrying. So 11 would give me a 1 in the 1's place, but I have to carry the 1 to the 10's place, because this is the value in the 10's place. And now we can add these. 8 and 2 is 10, plus that 1 that we carried is 11. So I put a 1 in the tens place and carry a 1 to the 100s place. Because we're working in the tens. If I have 11 tens, 1 in the tens place, 1 in the hundreds place. And then we can add these. There's nothing here, so we have 1 and 1 is 2. So we find the sum of 123 and 88 to be 211. So that's how we do addition. And always recall, if the value of the place that you're combining is more than 9, like 10 or 11 or anything higher, we have to carry the value into the next place, as we did here and in the hundreds. Let's look at this example. Let's again write it horizontally. We have 12,345. And we want to add 1,267. 5 and 7 is 12, so that's a 2 in the 1's, and we carry a 1 to the 10. 6 and 4 is 10, plus that 1 is 11. Again, we have to carry. 3 and 2 is 5, plus the 1 we carried is 6. No need to carry anything, because this value was less than 10. 2 and 1 is 3. Again, no need to carry. And 1. And no other value, there it is. And maybe we want to put our comma in there so that we know that this number is 13,612. All right, well, let's look at some properties of addition next. Uh, but before we do that, we have to introduce the term variable. Now, don't panic. It's OK. A variable is just defined as something that's holding the place of a number, a number we don't know, or a number we're going to substitute in at a later time. As an example, this A here, generally we use letters of the alphabet as placeholders. So this A represents a number. And what we're going to do is look at the identity property of addition. And that essentially says, if I add 0 to any number, it gives me that number. It identifies that number. So A plus 0 is A. And we call that the identity property. It's like showing its ID. If I add 0 to you, will you still be you? Yes. If we look at this example, 0 plus 8 is the same thing as 8 plus 0. So no matter which way we do it, the value we get out is 8. It identifies the number to be 8. And we call that the identity property of addition. What value can we add to a number so that we 
do not change it. So it retains its identity. That value is 0. So if you add 0, you're identifying the number using the identi identity property of addition. The next we're going to look at is the commutative property. Commutative property just means if we have two digits, and a and b are just our variables, this is some number, this is some other number, the commutative, commutative property states that if I add two values, the order in which I add them doesn't matter. So if I add a plus b, it's the same thing as b plus a. My example here is 2 plus 9. 2 plus 9 is the same thing as 9 plus 2. Both will result in 11. So if we have two values, we can use the commutative property and add them in any order we choose. We also have the associative property. This applies when we have more than two values that we're finding the sum of. As an example, if I have a plus b plus c, three different values, three different numbers, we can add them a plus b. We can do that value first and then add c to that. Or we can find b plus c first and then add a to find the total sum. So the order in which we do the addition doesn't matter. And if there are more than two values, we call that the associative property of addition. Let's look at an example of this because, of course, this is a little bit more complex. All right, so here I have 2 plus 9 plus 4. And I want to combine the 9 and 4 first. So 9 and 4 is 13. So I'm just going to write that underneath here, 13. 13 plus the 2 is going to give me 15. So that's one way to do that addition of a set of numbers. Now here I have the same example, but I'm going to do it in a different order. I have 2 plus 9 plus 4, but I'm going to add the 9 and 2 first. 9 plus 2 is 11, so I'll write that right here. And 11 plus 4 is 15. We can see we got the same sum. And because we have the same sum, we know that that associative of property does work. Now I'm going to do one more uh, example of the associative property. What if I wanted to add? 2 plus 4 first. Now here I did the 9 and 4. Here I did the 2 and 9. What would happen if I added the 2 and 4 first? Well, 2 plus 4 is 6. Now we can add the 9. And we get 6 plus 9 is still 15. So that shows that every combination that we added, we got the same sum. So Here's your opportunity to pause the video and try one for yourself. It's more uh, complex, but it gives you the example of our first example that we worked through and the associative property. Try it a different combination of ways to find out what the sum of 96 plus 36 plus 71 is. So try that for yourself. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is that application of addition. And I had mentioned we're going to show that using perimeter. So let's define perimeter. Perimeter is defined as the sum of all the sides around a shape, a polygon. Now, here I have an example of a square. And one thing about squares, I'll use a variable. I'll use s. This side, and that's why I chose the variable s, you can use any variable you want as long as it makes sense to you, is the same as this side and this side and this side. So if I wanted to find the perimeter of the square, I would add up all four sides, s plus s plus s plus s. The perimeter of this would be these four s's added together, the sum of the four s's. And we'll actually define an easier way to look at this when we get to the next section and talk about multiplication. When we have a rectangle, if we have this side, it's the same as that side. But as we can see visually, this is not the same length as these sides. So let's, I'm going to label this b, because it's the bottom. But it's also the top. These two lengths are the same. So if I were to add uh, all the sides up to find the perimeter, the distance around, I would have s plus s, these two sides added together, plus this side and this side. So it's the sum of all four sides. What about a triangle? Triangles, they can have different, all different sides. Maybe we'll call this one A, and this one B, and this one C. If I wanted to find the perimeter of this triangle, I would have A plus B plus C. And this would tell me the distance all the way around 
the triangle. If I start here and go from here to here to here, following along these edges, I would travel the distance of the sum of all three sides. So let's do a little practice here. Let's find the perimeter of this triangle. 12 is this side, plus 16, which is this side, plus 20, which is that side. And now I can add it in any order I want. I'm going to say 12 and 16 is 28. And then I'm going to add 28 to 20, which gives me 48. And then I'm going to be sure to use units, because this indicates inches. So my perimeter, and I'll say p for perimeter, is 48 inches. Now, again, here's your opportunity to pause the video. And notice what we have here is an example for you to try. Find the perimeter of this rectangle. And remember, when it comes to a rectangle, two sides are the same. The other two sides are the same, not all. Four sides are the same. So go ahead and practice this and tell me what you get for the perimeter. Um, and we'll stop right there. Thank you for watching.